Hi there, what's up? So today I'm going to cover cash flow statement analysis. This is the lecture which I had taken in Pune. And, uh, you know, though I will not be able to cover the entire stuff, but today I'm going to kind of, you know, give you guys an idea how to analyze a cash flow statement uh, with the help of a case study. Okay, it's the same case study I had taken in Pune. Uh, I'll try my level best to give you guys a bit of idea I will not be able to cover uh, the entire stuff though all right so here is a firm which is the air grow international uh, I had to take this because of um, uh, I, I could see some uh, problems with their cash flow statement and that's the reason I have taken this um, uh, you know firm now most of the time if you look at cash flow statement um, they have been pretty good like so you will not get uh, maximum firms you know uh, wherein the cash flow statement is kind of fucked completely uh, but then, yeah, you know, exceptions are like startups and, you know, the new companies and all that. And, and the companies which have gone through um, a severe, you know, recession or like, you know, uh, economical problem. But uh, more or less, you know, uh, setter is paribus, you know, other things being equal. Uh, in a good economic situation, the cash flow got to be positive. Uh, but there are certain companies, you know, even after having a good economic scenario, they do have negative cash flows. Rather, I would say that, you know, their cash flow is a little bit in the problem. Let's understand this company quickly. All right, so this is Ergo International. As you guys know, if you, I, I assume that you know you guys have an idea as far as the um, cash flow is concerned, and you guys have an idea, you know what kind of components are there in the cash flow, by the way. All right, to start with this, I'm gonna have a look at operating activities. Now, most of the guys um, you look at operating activities, and it, because because it gives you uh, an idea about your working capital, yeah. So yeah, so uh, if you look at your operating. Uh, activities this is going to give you a fair idea about your working capital. What is it? It's uh, uh, current assets minus current liabilities. By the way, and got to be in a uh, you know in a plus uh, way. So it has to be a positive number. By the way, all right. Now, if you look at this, right, uh, you can understand the company is already into the losses. Okay, here it is. So you've got like uh, so the company is in in loss. Now that's okay. Let's let's not even get in there. Like there are companies who are still in losses, but they still have positive cash flows. By the way. Um, okay, so if you look at this, what do we have under operations? So these are the basic stuff, you know, these are the non-cash items, which is the depreciation, the amortization and the bad debts and so on and so forth. Why these are uh, non-cash? Because you never paid them in real. So there is no real cash which has gone out of the company's books of accounts, you know. So there is, there is no cash that has been paid by the company in a real format or in a real uh, world. So you got to, you know, give it back to your cash flow. So for example, you had a revenue of say 100 ml, which is like 100 million dollar, by the way. Your depreciation is 20 dollar. Okay. So your, your, your gross profit would be dollar 80. Fine. But how much money you have in actual scenario in your bank account? How much money you have in your bank account? It's actually 100. Why? Because you never paid this 20 to anybody. It's a wear and tear in your fixed assets. Got it? So, if I put this up, 80 as my gross profit plus 20, it should give me 100. And this is the money I have in my account. Got it? And that is the reason all non-cash expenses should be added back to your um, cash flow statement as far as uh, US GAAP or you know as far as IFRS is concerned. Now, IFRS... Uh, is not different, you know. Sometimes IFRS uh, says that you know uh, you you do not, as far as certain um, you know headers are, or as far as certain expenses are concerned, you cannot put them into um, operating activities, but you can put them into financing activities, so and so forth. So when I cover US GAAP and IFRS comparison, I will definitely be talking about this. But I'm just giving an idea, you know. That there are US GAAP and IFRS; they do come into picture. All right. Now let's move ahead. Okay, so you have operating, um, you know, uh, income out here, operating activities, which has these items. So we already talked about it. And what is more interesting is look at the liability front. Okay, I've already marked it. You know, just just ignore my comments as of now. Just just go along with me. Okay. Now, if you look at accounts receivable, you know this this point out here. Your accounts receivable is in negative. So you were like round about like two point nine million earlier, and now you are nine point nine million which is absolutely bad now okay now let me let me give you a heads up so you say that you have a 9.9 .9 mil as an account as an accounts receivable which is in a negative number it means you are supposed to get this money back from your customer now 
this is the one thing now as a company how can i put this in a very nice way so i say i made a business or i made sales or a revenue of 9.9 mil okay uh, that's a fantastic figure that's an absolutely amazing figure like you made a business of like 9.9 mil okay great now this is a part of your income statement and this is a part of your cash flow statement try and understand the difference as a company you are reporting 9.9 ml as a business that you have done then you subtract depreciation then you subtract interest the taxes so and so so what's going to happen ultimately your net profit is going to be a huge number it's going to be a huge number on the basis of this if you're a public limited company you will be having a good eps number also okay but that's the reason as we say cash is a king you know cash is king and it has to be in a real life by the way <coughs> got it rashi in a real life by the way now cash is king and that is the reason more of the analysts are quite concerned or they are quite interested to have a look at your cash because of the accrual accounting okay your income statement is going to go as far as the accrual accounting irrespective of your received the cash or not the sale has been made you're going to report that okay but cash accounting which is the cash flow accounting you will be only reporting cash once you receive it once it's there actually exists in your bank account you know that's how it is so if you look at there is a there's a huge discrepancy in this company if the company reports 9.9 ml uh, as a business i think that's going to be a great thing but if i look at the other way around it's not a good thing because this is kind of in you know, a camouflaging uh, your uh, uh, statements but again let's go back and check this out what's happening here so at 9.9 and 2.99 okay so there, there there has been a great increase as far as the accounts receivable are concerned it means that this company is not getting be this company is not being paid by the um, customers now again remember if you have seen my video on liquidity ratio which i uploaded yesterday or day before yesterday i would say now in that video i have already made a mention about account receivable and how it plays an important role to understand the profitability the liquidity um the cash position of a company so again again it's been proved that you know account receivable definitely going to play an important role in the calculation of liquidity ratio and i think one should not be a uh, really positive or one should not be really optimistic as far as your cash flow uh, as far as your uh, accounts receivables are concerned yeah fair enough okay cool let's move ahead Uh, before we go ahead and talk about the inventory we will be having a quick look at the accounts payable now if you look at accounts payable here i am talking about this is my accounts payable wow so there's a good jump so you are now round about like 7.7 <coughs> million now you see here the, the problem is this number is a huge number so what's happening here is uh neither you are getting paid by your customers okay nor you are paying your customers rather you are because you are a customer to somebody nor you are paying to people so earlier you were sitting on 8.43 now you are on 7.7 million so what's that like you know what does it mean that you are really not having a good payment background so if you are as an analyst if you look at this company is pretty concerned not conservative i would say but this company is really not worried about paying of the uh, stakeholder so this company is not paying now if you look at i do not think this is this is the one um, time thing i think it has been maybe piling up like over a quarter by quarter you know so quarter on quarter company must be piling up these payables now you already not getting money from the uh, from your customer and you got 7.7 million now how are you going to offset that you're going to go for debt so you will be taking loan those loan will be offset against these payments not a good strategy okay so you have operating now if you look at the financing you can understand the company must be taking loan from somebody else or from some other banks uh, to kind of pay off this um, um, you know these these payments which looks to me pretty dangerous okay so accounts receivable is something that you should be worried about your accounts payable is something that you should be looking at then comes your inventory which is again the important aspect by the way And if you look at the inventory it's the same saga out here also 5.7 million you already had 2.5 million now we have increased it by like around about like you know it's it's a double uh, you know it's 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 grown up again 
Now, why it has why it has been the case? It means this company is expecting a good demand as far as their product is concerned. However, the company has produced more products, but they are not been able to sell them off. Again, it's a part of a liquidity, by the way. You can look at inventory turnover ratio, which will tell you how quickly you convert your inventories into a cash. Company who's got a less turnaround time, the companies who are converting their inventories into cash are cash rich companies and they've been doing absolutely well. So again, that's the problem out here. Now, these guys have made more inventory. Okay. Again, something doesn't really tie up. Now, let's have a look at your investing uh, activity. So your operating is like you're in negative. Okay. This is your, you're like screwed up completely. Okay. At, as I said, you know, this entire part is a serious problem because you see the major figures are in negative. Okay. Operating activities. I'm just going to take one stuff from here. Um, let's say, let's, let's talk about increase in restricted cash. Now, restricted cash, uh, it's just one of the, um, which is one of the interesting topic and as far as cash flow is concerned. I mean, interesting. Why? Because you can, you can talk a lot about it. Okay. Before I go ahead, let me, let me make you understand guys. What is restricted cash? A restricted cash is a cash, uh, which you are supposed to pay, uh, to your, to, to maybe any of the stakeholder, um, after a certain period of time. Okay. So this is the cash and you feel that. So these are not the, these are not kind of a payable. So you have this corpus you have kept aside because you feel that there will be an event on which you need to kind of, you know, pay this to your, uh, client or your customer. It's like deposits, like the, the kind of deposits that bank has. It's kind of a liability. So if you look at, again, these guys are in a tremendous negative figure because if you see over here, uh, if you see over here, this is like how much, like this is 3.4. It's like 344k again. It's not a good number though that you can talk about, but again, you know, the company has been struggling, uh, pretty badly. So you, again, your investing activities in again, you are like down by 1.1 million. Now here, if you look at, this is a long term debt. Okay. 10.66 million. So your company has taken 10.66, um, mil from the outside resources because of this 10.66 ml, uh, million, um, uh, company will be able to kind of, you know, pay off their debts. Now, this doesn't really sound good because you are, so, so what are trying to do? See how, how badly you're fucked because you are borrowing money from outside. Okay. So this is your financing, by the way. So this is your financing function. Now, when you have a financing function, what you should be doing is basically you should be focusing a lot on your operating activities. So you should have a very strong operating, um, you know, numbers, you should have a very strong operating profit, I would say out here. Uh, but again, this company has not been able to do so. Okay. If you look at the operating activities are in negative now. So you finance, you, you generate, you take money from the market. You put that into your operating, you double up the money. Okay. And then you put that into investing. That's how your cash flow should work. So you get a finance, put it into operations, make money by operations and do the investment and pay off the finances. Pay off the debt. That's how the cycle should work. But if you look at the company out here, they already have 10.66 ml, uh, the million car. It's, it's a 10.66 million debt on, on its, uh, uh, you can, you can see on its uh, financial statements. Now, if you look at a couple of figures out here, this is again, I'm not going to talk about this figure, uh, not that important by the way. So because of this, um, if you see then the couple of uh, investments, like 25 grand, like pretty small, uh, what's happening here? Uh, if you look at the financing activities, right? This is a positive number minus this and couple of you are at 9.17 million. Fine. Now look at the actual cash burn. This is your, look at the actual cash burn that you had. If you, if you sum up, if you sum up these numbers, so A, B, C, at the beginning of the period, you were cash positive. Okay. You were cash positive of how much? So 1.55 mil. Okay. Now, how much you have? How much you burn? Right. You have a net net. Rather, you have actually spent net net 1.14. What's your balance? It's 414k. That's it. If you remember at the end of the, uh, at the beginning of the uh, video, I said that, you know, even though you are loss making company, you can still have a positive cash flow. But if you look at the cash birth, you know, the utilization of cash by this company has not done any good to it. 
okay I don't do I, it, it will be it will be not a good idea to comment but anyway uh, doesn't doesn't look that you know the management has been efficient or you know the cash flow or the actual hard cash or the actual liquidity has been utilized properly uh, by the company okay cool guys so couple of pointers to sum up whenever you go ahead with your cash flow analysis kind of try to understand uh, the operating activities most important because that's kind of give you the working capital figure which has to be positive okay up uh, again there are exceptions we, we, we will be talking about it later on okay so working capital you're going to look at your current assets you're going to look at your current liabilities most importantly you will be looking at your financing function so how much money you got from the market okay or all the sources and how did you use uh, that money okay and how much you are investing rather out of investment how much money you are making out of your investments so you can also take a call as an analyst uh, you know if the investments of a company are good ones or the bad ones okay i hope you understood couple of stuff from this video i'll be uploading couple of more videos as far as the cash flow statement analysis is concerned uh, you, this this is all i have for you, for you guys today um hope you like the video and you can subscribe to my channel for more video that's the name of the channel ketan kg thank you so much for your time guys thank you so much